many emerging economies, they had this fleeting opportunity to rethink the way they do water and sanitation. Many of these emerging economies, uh, the urbanization that's taking place is not taking place in the big cities, but it's villages that are becoming towns, that are becoming cities. And these villages don't have mature infrastructure currently. So you have this small window of opportunity to sort of really reimagine how you do water and set yourself on a completely different trajectory to what we have done in, say, Europe and in other Western countries. You can't be what you can't see. We have to reimagine the future and tell that story and share those stories so that we can create a new possibility. We need our leaders to be telling a new story and creating that new vision of where we want to be. We can see that yeah, in countries like India and Nigeria where leaders are standing up and painting a new vision and future of where they want to be. Without government giving the rules, the private sector isn't able to operate in the way that it should be able to, and they're not able to look after the very poor. The human right to water and sanitation is actually something that becomes a building block for sustainability in the system. When we've organized for everyone to have access to safe water and dignified sanitation and safe sanitation, the knock-on effect on the health costs, the knock-on effect on reducing the number of days that people are prevented from contributing to the economy, organizes for us to develop the kind of model that goes from organizing for basic right on the one hand as a means to prosperity on the other hand. This, in fact, is what is holding back most of the developing world from taking their place in the pantheon of development in the world today. Till 2050, urban water demand will increase by 80%, so that's quite a lot. Now for the cities to cope with this, to address climate change, to address the population increase, it's very important to make the right investments. And interestingly, the investments might not be done in the city. The investments could be done in the agricultural sector where the water is. Because in 80% of those conflict areas where the water is with agriculture and not in the urban area, an improvement in irrigation use efficiencies by just 10% could solve the water crisis of the cities. We can't wait for someone else to do things. As water professionals, it's on us. There is no them, there is only us, and we can actually do something about it.